Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're happy to have you again this Thursday morning. If you're joining us for our second session today, welcome back. We're happy that you're joining us again. If today, if this is your first session of the day, uh, thank you for being here. We appreciate you being here. Um, and make sure you stay all the way to the end as we will share what else is coming today as this is our last day officially of streaming for our virtual learning experiences for students. Um, for this school year, we're, we're, we hope you've enjoyed this series, um, kind of a fun way to do some field trips and learn about different careers and bring people to your classrooms uh, that you, you weren't able to do this year because it's not really the kind of year we're used to. So we do hope that this has been helpful and beneficial to you and for your students. So um, today, uh, this session, I'm happy to announce that we have another great, uh, great guy and a great career path that you're going to learn about uh, that another job that you may be interested in that you never knew existed and you'll learn a lot about things that you see on TV and how people get there so it's again it's going to be very interesting don't forget that the chat box is over there on the right hand side please feel free to add your appropriate comments please keep the chat clean and remember it's supposed to be used for questions and comments on the presentation. Um, we do see you, we do see you saying hi, so you don't have to see that. Remember, we also have a bot in the, in the chat, so no, no lots of capital letters, inappropriate language, uh, too many capital letters, too many symbols, too many emoji, all of that will get flagged and cooled down. And we also have our great moderators. Thank you, EdTech team, with the rich beside their name. You guys have been awesome through this series as well, so we appreciate you. Um, and so with that, uh, again, I'm going to bring back my friend and colleague, Kaylin Markman, from the Department of Teaching and Learning. And uh, she is going to introduce our guest for this hour. Kaylin, take it away. Thank you, John. You guys are in for a true Hollywood story this morning. As I introduce my dear friend, Alex, he is here all the way from Los Angeles to join us and talk to us about what it means to be a Hollywood agent and how he got here. So thank you for joining me, Alex. I truly appreciate you. Hey guys. Um, so, before we kind of get started, I want to just ask you one question to kind of figure out who, so they can figure out who you are. If you were going to have, let's say, a uh, talk show, who would your first three guests be? It's a really tough question. Um, you know, I, I think um, you know, there's some people that I've met since I've been doing this that I was very impressed with. And a lot of those people have qualities that are, they're, they're all really nice. And the, I think if I were to have the first person that I would have, it would probably be Brad Pitt. Um, I've met him a few times and he is the nicest, most gracious person. And the people that he has in his life, he's had the same people in his life for his entire career. Um, I love Brad Pitt. I love the movies that he does. And he has staying power. He's been out here and doing this since uh, he was discovered off of Thelma and Louise. And that he has the same people in place since he uh, he played the guy on the couch in Thelma and Louise. Um, I would put Brad Pitt, I think, as a guest. I, I love Will Smith, and I, they, you know, they say Will Smith was one of the first real movie stars. And the reason that I like Will Smith is that he, you know, he opens good and he opens bad movies. So people go to see Will Smith even in a bad movie. I forget the movie. He was playing like a superhero, and uh, it was a really horrible movie. But the, the qualities of a movie star are, you know. It's, it can't always be good, and it's not always going to work out. It's not going to land with everybody, but Will Smith is, is a straight-up movie star, and he's a kind person. He has the same people in his life, and uh, but he, if it's good or bad, he shows up. If it's raining, he, I mean, he, he opens, and opens bad movies, and sometimes not everyone does that. Sometimes people see their movies, and they, don't, they, they just say, you know what, I'm not going to, I don't want to be involved in that, but Will's, Will Smith absolutely uh uh, is someone that I like a lot and I uh, I look up to. Um, so that, those, those are both those are both great guests. I would imagine you have a stellar show from both of them. It would be really interesting. They're actually not Will Smith's not as large as you think uh, in real life, but um, you know on camera he looks really big. Well, that's important. Really, yeah, that's, the 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 camera guys do a really good job at that. Yeah. Um, 
So just to give them an idea so that they know the projects that you've worked on. John, if you wouldn't mind pulling up. So um, Alex was uh, gracious enough to send over to me some of the projects, movies, actors, actresses, things that he's influenced. And I just want to scroll through this briefly so that they have an idea of what we're talking about here. Um, and then we can talk about what it is that really you do uh, on a regular basis. So these are obviously some projects or people that um, he's worked with. And you can see a lot of these are probably things that you are very familiar with um, and actors and actresses. Um, and all of these um, all of these people, Alex has had something to do with um, in his career. And it's been a really interesting one. And you're, you're going to want to hear the story about how he got there. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we put a, a bunch of uh, sort of films and shows that we were involved with and I was involved with. I think early on, um, uh, one of the, the biggest things that I was involved with to start that sort of took off really large was with uh, Blake Lively and uh, we were, uh, it was a series called Gossip Girl, which they're actually now redoing. Uh, and when I had met Blake, I think Blake was uh, 14 or 15 and I actually had to negotiate uh, with her principal to get her out of school so that we could screen test uh, for a movie at the time, which was called Mean Girls, which she didn't get. And then uh, it was the summer after that we got a film called Sister to the Traveling Pants. And um, but Gossip Girl was uh, uh, one of the, the first uh, sort of big, uh, big things that I was a part of, which, you know, hit very, very hard. Uh, and it was very apparent um, that this thing was going to have a gener generational impact on the people that had seen it and the people that were in it. And it did. Um, other uh, and, you know, other things that were on there sort of to start. Um, you know, some of the uh, series that I was involved with, which then became uh, very, you know, I think very significant. High School Musical was a, a very influential one in my uh, career. Uh, and before, High School Musical was actually uh, curated as a movie for television for, for the Disney Channel. And uh, it's the first time in history that uh, something from the Disney Channel had essentially become the biggest thing. It was our, this generation's or the generation before, uh, where it hit it's their version of Greece, and when I saw that, I knew very clearly that this thing was going to have major legs. Uh, and uh, Ashley Tisdale, someone who I, I've worked with for many, many years, and uh, what's nice with Ashley is that she is just uh, the kindest person. She's from uh, from New Jersey, and um, she uh, she's just a real performer. And uh, you know, we toured around uh, every single stadium in the country. They sold out. Uh, singing the songs of High School Musical. And it was really, uh, it was a wild thing because what happened, uh, every studio executive had kids that wanted to meet someone that was in the High School Musical. And it was a really great relationship builder for me at the time um, because they wanted to meet Ashley. And part of my, uh, you know, developing really good relationships uh, was that if they wanted to meet Ashley, I would go with her to those meetings. And uh, the High School Musical was something that I was very, uh, very proud of and hit really big. And and um, there's a lot, quite a few series and films that we've been involved with, my company's been involved with, and I've been involved, involved with over the year. But the, the, the current thread for many of them is some people uh, we get on the way up and others we get on the way down. And uh, I do believe that um, once a star, always a star. And, you know, like with uh, a piece of material, if it's not the right time to date, there will be the right time for it at some point. Um, you just have to figure out where you're getting that person and if you can 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 help that person. Um, but you know, Adam Driver, who's a client uh, with my partner in New York, uh, who uh, is you know stars uh, in Star Wars. We've represented Adam since he was in college, um, uh, which is also very interesting. And there's a lot of there's many clients that I've met uh, that are now in their in their 30s that I that I met when they were 13 and 14. And uh, what I find fun about that is where you get to communicate and you, uh, you, you remember what it's like, but you actually get to connect with a, a version of yourself at that age. And um, it's fascinating. Well, you know, Alex, I love that you said that. So tell me about when you were that age. Who, who did you want to be at that age? It's, it's a great question and it's an awkward question. I don't think I wanted to be anyone uh, per se, but uh, I felt that... Um, 
you know, I was very much a fan of a lot of things and I like to watch things and I was very moved by certain TV shows and I was moved by certain films. Uh, and uh, I think I would, was more on the outside than the the inside on the in the sort of in the earlier years, which is probably very common for uh, for a lot of people, uh, maybe a lot of you. And uh, it wasn't until later in life that I realized that those were the qualities that I would actually tap into to help me in my later career. Uh, that sort of uncomfortability, that being on the outside, uh, observing what other people were doing, and. Uh, at some point uh, made a conscious decision that I was done watching people doing things that were cool. Uh, and whatever the reason for uh, being uncomfortable, I was done being uncomfortable and I wanted to be a part of those things. Uh, but it was those observation skills and figuring out what exactly was going on and why. Uh, and I think it's probably very common for a lot of you um, where one isn't sure where one fits in and when one is watching people do a lot of different things. And it's just at some point you're going to decide to Maybe it's my time, and maybe it's my time to be a part of what's going on. Um, but uh, I didn't necessarily want to be anybody, and that was something that scared me in many ways. It scared me in, in middle school, and that had me uh, focus on sort of certain things that I thought was I thought was cool, which was not cool at the time, math and things like that. Um, but uh, I now know later those skills of sort of just focusing and waiting for my time to speak and all those things. All those things were things that very much helped me now. And by the way, at 44 years old, I still don't know what I wanna do, but I think that's also part of a uh, having a certain mindset, an infinite mindset of not necessarily worrying about, okay, this is what I'm doing, or this is what I should be doing, but never necessarily having figured that out. But now I know that it's that process of staying in that weird process. This is exactly where the good stuff is gonna come, where you're gonna be your most true self. Of course. I mean, it's like when, when someone says to you, it's, it drives me nuts when someone says, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I'm like, well, number one, do I really have to grow up? That's Let me ask you that question first. No. And secondly, do I have to say I'm going to be one thing? Because I feel like it's an evolution um, as we move through our lives. And, and it's all those different experiences we have that allow us to grow and eventually, you know, and achieve whatever it is that we want to. And and limiting yourself to that one idea, I think, is um, kind of stifling. Yeah, I think people focus too much on, okay, I need to be this, or I need to do this, because you're seeking the approval of other people. And then when you realize that, um, stop doing all of those things, and keep this power that you have, because it's, there's an endless cycle of trying to figure out the getting those approval sources from other people. And when you stop doing that and you realize, okay, what I'm doing here is actually okay. And Absolutely. maybe people that see what I'm doing, that exactly. uh, maybe I can help other people find that in themselves. You know, uh, and Donna has, uh, has a great question, which actually I'm gonna combine the question with a kid uh, by the name of Dylan. And Dylan was asking, what are some of the hardest tasks that you have to get a famous actor to work with you? So what are the things you have to do? Like what skills do you bring in play? And then Donna was asking about your negotiations and business skills because a lot of kids probably don't understand um, what it is you do on the regular basis on the daily. I mean, look, uh, getting someone to work with you is, is definitely challenging. And when you're younger, um, most of the people that I represented when I just became an agent around 25, they were all 10 and 15 years older. And you have to shoot very quick and fast to get them to engage with you where they think that what you're saying, uh, that they might need you. But the older you get, uh, I mean, I know this, I know Kaylin, you know this, that uh, it's specifically the younger people that have these fresh opinions because they're not laden with, you know, sitting in jobs for a long time. They're not really scared. And, uh, you know, the hardest thing is getting, the hardest thing to getting anyone to work with you is just getting to see them in person or getting to sit with them in a, in a Zoom chat or a FaceTime. Because once you can get someone and you are about something real, it's really not that difficult signing anyone at all. But you have to remove the barriers uh, that make you um, not as effective, right? If someone tells you, hey, I want you to meet my friend because I think my friend is great or this, it's generally never going to be a good reflection of that person until you get that person in the room. And I, I spend a lot of time getting people interested in something, but I put that person in front of the other person because it's going to be the best sales tool. I am my best sales tool if I can get to meet someone directly without other people involved telling them about what I'm going to say. 
Um, in terms of sort of um, the well, business- Well, let me jump, jump yeah. in for one second, Alex, because yeah. I want to just highlight the fact that I think one of the things that probably makes you so successful in establishing those relationships is being the most authentic version of yourself, right? And really establishing a trust with, with people so that they, they believe that you have their best interests at heart. It, look, uh, years ago when I, when I came to town, the, the hardest thing that I had was um, I, I felt that there were a lot of people that I was like, I don't like these people. Like, who are these people? I can't be like these people. I, I got to get out of here. And that I know now that those irrational voices that I had in my head are really not coming from anyone other than those are just, those were my insecurities at the time. And I think there was a guy that I dealt with when I was delivering mail and uh, at my first job, which was a, a brutal job. Uh, literally delivered mail uh, for for months. Um, a guy said to me, he's like, hey, can I take you to lunch? And at that lunch, I, I kind of uh, let it all out. And I told him that uh, I was like, I just can't do this. I got to get out of here. I got to go home. I got to go back to New York. And he said, just calm down. And he goes, you don't need to meet everybody. And by the way, you don't need to have business with everyone. Why don't you just like start with a couple people and have a lot of business with those people? And I think, uh, well, I know that um, like, where you guys are now and i was always like i have the same friends since first grade i haven't changed and you either are into what i'm selling in life or you're not and i'm okay with that and for me i have a very small group of people that i consider very close friends but i also know a lot of people and for those other people that i know and there's a lot of those people they know who my friends are and they know that's very tight and if you have an issue with me that's okay then i have an issue with you but I'm not going to go out of my way to deal with that. I'm just not going to deal with you. And uh, if you have an issue with one of my friends, then they have an issue with you too. And that's okay. And I think uh, if you are controlled in your dissatisfaction of other people, but understand people are going to make choices that don't really affect you. If you just like are about something real, but to your point, Kaylin, just be real. And if you stop pleasing other people, and I think you guys are at the really great place in your lives, where this awkwardness, this where am I going, this is specifically the place that you want to stay. And this is, uh, you know, great writers uh, are the ones that aren't living in great places, that just aren't worried about pleasing people. They're literally just creating things because it's their truth. And uh, whatever it is that you're doing, if you are true to yourself and if you are, um, if you maintain genuine relationships for the right, reasons you can figure out what to do with those relationships but this guy said hey you know know everyone have a few relationships but i knew that i needed to meet everybody and then i'd figure out what to do with those people and it wasn't always for gain uh and it wasn't always but i, I knew that if i gave more than i got at some point i would have equity with a lot of these people and i could figure out what to do with that so that if i make a phone call and i say hey uh i need you to meet my friend kaylin she's very special and she has great energy and she's very unique I'm going to get that meeting and Kaylin's going to get that job, not because I'm this or that, or Kaylin has this or that, uh, or other people think it's that it's, she's going to get that because they know I don't make that phone call and right. you want to be able to transact in anything based off of what you really believe. And then people know that you're the real deal. Of course, that's important to be a person of your word. Um, and so there was a question about, Oh, who was your favorite actress or actress actor to work with and why? Um, hmm. you may, well, he may not want to answer that question because then he's like, he, somebody else is going to call him and say, I thought I was your favorite. <laughs> it's like your favorite. Uh, <laughs> they're all my favorite. No, yeah. um, uh, the cool year, uh, when I was, when I came to Hollywood, I, I had a, a, a envision that I wanted to work with some people that, uh, that I saw growing up. And that was very important to me, uh, that I wanted to see if there was these people that I looked up to that I could. Um, help and be a part of, and maybe that I would be at a place in my life that they needed me as much as I needed them. And there was quite a few people that I have the opportunity of working with that I would sit at home and I would watch a movie and then I would call them up and I, or I would write them some ridiculous letter and tell them what I thought about them then when I was 13 and now in my forties. And, uh, but specifically one that I'm quite fond of, uh, you know, I work with Meg Ryan. And Meg Ryan was one of the biggest uh, and still is one of the biggest movie stars in the world. 
And what I'm fascinated with Meg specifically, and uh, uh, you guys, your parents very much know who Meg Ryan is. Is Sorry, that- you can pull up the image if you want. Uh, yeah, she's uh, kind. Um, and she looks at the world in such a positive way. And she looks to find why someone is someone that uh, we should, uh, why we shouldn't give this person a chance. And it's how she evaluates uh, material, how she evaluates all things in life. It's just, she is just such a supremely positive person. And it brings me to a point, I find that the people at the top of their game are really uh, the most accessible people um, and generally have, uh, they got there because they are being true to themselves. And it's the people that aren't at the top of their game that uh, are versions of themselves that are just not that cool. And it's the same thing that applies I think, to life now and the people that you know. And you know the people that have it all figured out that are this way or that way, or maybe make you feel a certain way or react to you a certain way, these are, most of those people are not gonna be doing anything. And every single person that is is trying to figure it out that isn't necessarily running at full speed right now, specifically right now where you guys are, you guys are the ones that are gonna be making these changes and you guys are gonna be the ones that are doing very big things. But uh, it's always, um, I was thinking about, as it applies to Megan, as it applies to you guys, like if there's that person that, that you wanna talk to before you leave school, do it now. And those are the people that probably want you to talk to them, but you just don't know that. And those are going to be the easiest people to talk to. The people that you think that you can't talk to, uh, if you think they're cute, if you think they're smart, those specifically are the people that you need to talk to right now. And those are the easy, they're, they're much easier to talk to than the people that are letting you know specifically what they want you to think of them. Those aren't the people that are worthy of your time. Well, and, and that goes to, you, you know, I think also having the courage to do so. It makes, Samantha had asked a question um, about what inspired you to be where you are now. So I kind of want to back you up for a second because you leaving New York and going to LA, that was a risk, um, right? And yeah, I, um, yeah. I mean, talk about that because I don't think, because it's obviously a very tough business to break into and the sacrifices that you made to be where you are now. Yeah, uh, and look, I was very math focused, uh, and I, I was math focused from middle school into high school. And in, 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 in middle school, we were part of a test program where we skipped uh, a grade in math. And then in high school, I would tutor people uh, in math, and uh, I'd placed out of physics and and uh, and calculus early in high school. And I think I was on that path towards maybe doing something in as in, in engineering or in finance specifically. And uh, it was in an interview that I had in finance with the head of an investment bank and everyone was going into finance where the head of the bank said to me, you, you should not be doing this. And I, and I, it was very turn, turn from it. And he goes, I think you should go to Hollywood. And he, he, he made a phone call for me to go to Hollywood. And I called, once I had an interview with one person, I called every other company to tell them that I was meeting this one person. And, um, I think the desire to go out here, I was watching a movie, which uh, I know Kaylin knows, called Swingers. And Swingers was a movie that was very influential of a certain time period about what Los Angeles was like and what Hollywood was like. And I, I had thought, I was like, you know, I, I, I wanna do that, I could go do that. And um, in an interview that I had with uh, a potential employer where I ended up working uh, to deliver mail, uh, which again was the worst job on the planet, he goes, well, why do you want to be here? Uh, do you, did you know anyone in the business? Do you have any experience? I said, well, I don't. But I, I, I mean, for a movie to have me leave my family and friends behind, um, to move all the way across here to deliver mail for free in a windowless room, I was like, that's got to be a pretty good movie. And, um, and, and he had actually put together the movie. So the guy that I was interviewing with. And that's sort of where it happened. And I think... Uh, qualities, um, I knew that I, I, I was always very keen on um, knowing, I, just, I could tell when things were happening. Uh, I could tell when I met someone uh, at a party uh, and it wasn't so much an attraction thing, but sometimes it was. Uh, well, I really like that person or, and, or I like, there's just something really great about this guy or, oh my, you know, this, this, this woman had, had real power. 
And I knew that that was, well, now I know that that's a skill. Uh, at that uh, back then, I did not. It's your, it's your superpower. And I think at some point, it would always, and I was always, uh, and people tease me about this, they, they, they call it Alex's life hacks, that I could figure out, hey, what are we doing tonight? Or, um, you know, what are you reading? Or what are you watching? Or what are you eating? And uh, if you have qualities uh, like that, where you feel like you might be, you might know about things a little bit uh, ahead of other people that you watch something or you listen to a song uh, and, you're, and you're just like, oh, that's a jam, I love this. And then it is a jam. Uh, and it's not a jam. Like, like Yacht Rock? Like Yacht Rock? <laughs> like your love of Yacht Rock, which you and my wife just love. And yeah. uh, But the thing is, it happens to be very, very hip and very on point. But it was just, I knew that those qualities uh, well, now I know that there's just, uh, I knew when I, I, I liked something, I liked it and I would just tell people about it. And that's essentially what this job is. This job is just knowing people and telling people about things that you like. And it's not being right. That's, uh, that's not what it is. It's just um, that feeling you get when you just, and the excitement factor. You can never, no one can beat you at something that you really, that you really enjoy. Uh, and uh, I really, I've always liked people. I'm, I'm a connector. I love, um, uh, and I also don't like fake people. I can smell it, and I can also smell where people are coming from. And in some ways, I've there's a way to use it to your advantage. And it doesn't mean that you can't give yourself to that person if you feel like that person wants to borrow something from you. That's all fine. But it's choosing who you want to give that thing to. And just because someone wants something for you doesn't mean that you have to give it. And in earlier in life, you're just you. If someone wants something, you want to give it to them because you want to maybe please them, or you want them to think this of you. And this power that you harness by it's okay to have certain people not like you, and that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. But it's harnessing that and giving it to the people that actually need it, and then really good, fun things can happen from that. Absolutely, I, I would 100% agree with that. And uh, it's funny because one of the kids, Josh, and I just want to give him a shout out really quickly. He said that he would have done the exact same thing just to get into the company. So he would have delivered as much mail as he had to. Yeah, that's And nice. that's, that's a good work ethic uh, lesson in life, right? That's what's um, up, Josh. But I'll tell you, Josh, the, the key is you gotta be in a place that people can see you. And I knew that being in the mail room at some point, which is, it's not gonna happen for me here. This is a windowless room with 30 other people. And these guys had law degrees. These people were very cutthroat. And you have to put yourself in a place to be seen. Uh, so. I had to get out of that mail room because I knew that once I could interact with people and they asked me a question or I would tell, you know, hey, I read this, I thought this was cool, or why aren't you guys signing that person? You need to be in a place where it's to be seen. So you could be an amazing um, basketball player, amazing football player, amazing artist, just like put yourself out there. And yeah. don't be worried about people not being into what you're doing because at some point someone will be. Matt's asking a great question. So how does someone get picked up by an agent? Um, as an actor. Yeah. Um, it just, it really, it really depends. I think now the, today it's very different. Uh, now, uh, I used to, I, I, years ago, I toured around the country as a scout, a model scout. And that was very challenging because you're, you're judging people on very subjective things. This is what I look like. And I think now there are, um, there are just the access to, uh, to getting, uh, scene is so much, but it's also more, more, it's more crowded. Uh, and there was an actor that I worked with for many years uh, named Bo Burnham, uh, who we uh, found off of, my partner found off of the internet. And he's one of the first people really to cross over. And I think uh, Bo Burnham would still be found today. And Bo Burnham would be the voice that he is today. Um, but it's just so much more crowded because I think you're also dealing, the, 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 the influencer culture, which did not exist, when Kaylin and I uh, came out of college, that creates a bit of an inauthentic uh, uh, pathway for people to have success. So it's deciding who really wants to be seen and for what. There's a thousand videos of people online playing the ukulele. I like to watch those, but how do you really figure out who's what? Um, so one can absolutely get seen, but I would say if you are an actor and um, you, you wanna make it, you can 100% work professionally. That's not hard, but you have to be willing to lose everything. You have to decide that, you know what? I'm willing to lose and not speak to anyone that I know and put it on the table because people are. 
and people will do that and that's what you're up against. But if you want to do it, if you want to be famous, I think that that's not necessarily a path for a, a long, happy life because it's about even the, the biggest actor in the world is really only working eight weeks a year. That's a that's the, those that's just the reality. Unless you're on a TV series, the biggest movie stars are generally working maybe eight weeks to three months a year, and the rest of the time they're not doing anything. So I would recommend uh, start uh, you know find uh, act in school, act in plays, act in parts where you think that you can that you can really be good, and it doesn't have to be uh, the biggest part, but also put yourself in scenes with other people that you think are really good, and it's okay to have that that shine on you a bit. And then if it's something that you want to do, you can 100% work professionally. That's not the barrier anymore. Anyone can do it. It's just, you know, can you be competitive so that you have the opportunity of choosing between other things? Because no one's going to care that you did it at some point. That is the lesson in life. No one's really paying attention. And the second you realize that no one's paying attention, then it's a very freeing. You can do whatever you want. You can, you can be like Kaylin and you could be singing Yacht Rock videos. In your, in your living room. But the reality is, is once you realize no one's paying attention, why do I want to do it? Because anyone, you can work professionally if you want to as an actor. And if you think it's cool and you want to do this, you want to do that. The thing that you're up against, against a lot of people is that these kids that do the Disney Channel series and stuff, these kids move out here with their parents and they move out here very young. So by the time that these kids are 17, 18, 19, they've probably done a hundred episodes of television. So it's it's very um, they're 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 willing to, to to risk it all, and you have to just know that. And by the way, take a shot if it's something that you want to. I, I can guarantee you that you can work professionally. How long you can go is going to be uh, you know you know how how good you are at really being truthful and accessing various emotional range. That's just the facts. But you can 100% do it. I think um, it's just figuring how to get seen. But you need to be in an acting program where you can showcase so people can see you. Yeah, I agree. Um, so Ashley has a great question. What's what's the what's a favorite thing about what you do? What do you love? The what most? I love is when I've read something and I know it's really cool, and when I'm on the other end of it, and I've been on that set, and I see them making it, I see them working long nights. I love them sitting uh, in the first screening of that show or the movie. Uh, and then I look over to my client and we get that feeling that we, uh, here we go again. And um, it's really just validating and it's fun and it's exciting when you see that thing cross over from an idea to billboards and buses and then the reaction that you get from people uh, online. It's, it's supremely exciting. I have a, a movie that I'm involved with with an actor um, who stars in a series called Stranger Things. And uh, we are finally waiting for his movie to come out, which is New Mutants, which is the uh, the anti X Men X Men, and it's going to come out in August. And it's something that we've been talking about for a long, long time. And I know that people are going to love it. And uh, it's just it's it's exciting when you go on a long journey. And it, these are long journeys. Sometimes these movies can be in the can for three, four, five years. But uh, it's very exciting when you took a chance on something. And it works out. It's also great when it's like a little movie, and um, and you can say, "I remember when that filmmaker was something." And everyone involved knows the moment that it happens. It's just exciting when you see that inflection point in someone's life and career. Of course, and you know that was one of the questions that actually was asked early on in the in the chat. So I'm th I'm grateful you asked that answered that because people ask, you know, how long does it take for a movie? And sometimes that is it's years. Right. It's a, a, a movie from start to finish, generally it's a five-year process uh, from the idea to the script to the time that you see it in the movie theater. But uh, I'm very into right now what's happening in the world, and you guys are, ben we're all beneficiaries of it, with what's happening in the world with the collapsing of the movies, the theatrical window, the corridors, what they call it. So the fact that you can see Scooby-Doo at home or you can see... Um, which I'm very excited to see um, uh, the the movie with uh, Pete Davidson, which is coming out. It's going to be very cool to see movies come out at home at the same time that they're coming out in theaters. And it's a very big point of contention right now in the business uh, because people, you know, should want that movie movie experience. But the blessing and the encouragement that I have for everyone to, if, if anything about this is exciting, I would I would tell you to run towards it because this is a it's the wild wild west out here. And I think that if you actually are into stuff 
that you like, you can have an amazing business and a very cool life and you can travel around the world and you can work on things that you really are into because there's not, there's just so much stuff going on. There, uh, Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and HBO Max, this, this wasn't around. There is an unlimited, yeah. in, the, in the real estate business, there's just, you need space. And at some point you're gonna be in these big cities so buildings have to go up. But in, in the entertainment business, they only want more. And the format has changed, but there's, there, there's it's the wild, wild west. Uh, right, so do you want to binge watch, like I binge watched Outer Banks for like two days. <laughs> of course you did. And course you did. Know, take uh, that brought me back to my Jersey Shore, you know, ch summers. I mean, which is, yeah. And that show is, you know, that show is a version of, uh, it's, Oz it's Ozark meets a, a show called Young Americans. And uh, yeah. I think Outer Banks is a, is, 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 is a great show. And there was a show that I'm involved with called I'm Not Okay With This, which I think is one of the best shows that's ever happened. I watched that show from 3.30 a.m. to uh, to 9 a.m. when it came out. But it, it, there's just so much opportunity for, for work. People are always going to want to watch shows. People are always going to watch movies. And um, Of course. Um one of the one of the kids, Cole, had asked actually, uh, "What has been your biggest accomplishment? Would you say to date?" Oh, Cole, so so direct, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my greatest accomplishment, I think, uh, there isn't one, but I am very proud of certain careers that I was involved with where the actor necessarily was not the first choice. Uh, and there's countless examples of jobs where the actor didn't want to do it and the, um, the people involved didn't want to do that. Uh, you know, Gossip Girl with Blake Lively was an example of that. Uh, and it was, a, it was a battle at the time to get her that job. Uh, Jonah Hill is an actor that I met uh, through a friend at the poker game and getting you know Jonah Hill accepted, uh, which was a uh, which also had Blake and was very challenging because he had read nine times to get that job, and on the ninth time, um, the head of the studio called the owner of my company and told him that Alex cannot call on this job this uh, this job again because Jonah is never going to be an accepted. Uh, so the owner of my company came to my office and he looked very upset, and he said. He goes, we're going to fire you if you make another phone call on this. Um, you cannot call it. Let it go. And then uh, at that moment, I decided to make the 10th call on this. <laughs> of course you did. Of and, course. Uh, and that's how Jonah Hill got accepted. And I had tied uh, the release of Sister to the Traveling Pants to the movie Accepted. But I, I wouldn't say that I'm a, a proud of any accomplishment, one, but uh, I make a living on telling, uh, you know, being a, an actor's representative or a writer's representative, you're choosing to make your living on other people that are playing make-believe for a living. And with that comes a, a responsibility and a, a, and, a, and a gentle way of protecting those people, but also being unshameable and tough on the other end. And I'm, 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 I'm proud of a lot of um, the Harold and Kumar film series was something that I was involved with, which I was really proud of. Uh, and I'm supremely proud of Letitia Wright uh, an actor who I met, uh, uh, and there was resistance in her getting the role of Suri in Black Panther. So it's not one accomplishment, but we talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of uh, the process, and I, when I get, I use negative feedback more to inform the, the decisions that I make than positive feedback. I don't want to hear, hey, good job. I don't want to hear, oh, you're right. When I get negative feedback from people, and it's very applicable to your lives right now, that tells you a lot more than positive feedback. So if someone says to you, you know, oh, I don't, that outfit's weird, or you don't look good in that, or did you, are you really studying math, or you know, are you really, you know, is this what you're doing? That that should give that is telling you more about them than it is about yourself. And if you, I use negative feedback in getting people to work, and it's not a desire just to be right. But I know, I knew that Letitia Wright would be in the Black Panther. I knew it. I had just, I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Um, I knew that uh, Jonah was going to be an accepted. I just knew that. Um, and uh, I had to risk potentially uh, losing my job over it. And I was comfortable with that because uh, it would be okay. But I think it's, it's a collection of 
uh, I'm, 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 I'm most proud right now that I'm very tough. Uh, uh, there's a, uh, and a, uh, it's, it's uh, that I'm still able to do this and that this is a job. Um, and I think that's uh, an accomplishment. Um, that and I, I, and I, I think that's amazing, Alex. I really do. And I, I loved, uh, Actually, you definitely tugged on uh, the heart change of somebody because it says that they they love that you're happy with other people's success, and that's huge, right? So you have to want that for them, and yeah. I think that's it's a look. It's it's really what it's all about, I think. And um, when I when I look for young clients, uh, say young women, um, I think of what I what I was very keen on when I was sixteen or fifteen. And those are the qualities that I look at in those women. And that's how I can say, oh, I feel like it's gonna happen. And Blake at the time was just really adorable and stunning and kind and genuine. And she loved Harry Potter and she was very awkward in many ways, but I knew that this is, um, it felt right to me. And Jonah was just such a sweetheart and, uh, and, and just very funny and reminded me of other things. And I think um, you, uh, Negative feedback is a very, very positive thing, and you need to just embrace it. And you need to um, don't worry about. Uh, we talked, and it's very psychological. Just like find, a, be be okay with who you are, and start telling people about who you are, and be very vocal about it. Uh, Absolutely. I, I think, um, but in terms of getting people work, it's just the qualities that I like in 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 men and. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the guys that I work with and Taylor Kinney, who stars in Chicago Fire, uh, and uh, Stephen Strait, who stars in a, a series called The Expanse, they all have certain qualities and they're great people. They're close with their families, very close to their moms. Uh, and not all of them were actors. That's the key. The actors that are acting in high school, they're very good. And you can, those people will become professional actors, but the qualities that I like are the ones necessarily that weren't the actors to start. A lot of them were athletes. The guys were athletes, they're very coachable and they can take direction and they can take criticism. Of course, that's a great, that's a really good point. That's a transferable skill, definitely. Um, you, I mean, Alex, you've been awesome. I, I mean, I expected it. Uh, I, you know, I, I've known you for, I feel like a lifetime. Um, and, I, and I thank you for your time. Before we, before I turn it over to John, I wanna ask you, you know, you kind of touched on it a bit. But, um, you know, in middle school and high school and you struggle with this pressure to conform to the masses, right? But yet, you know, there is that awkwardness that you struggle with and, and you mentioned it with math and the things that you were liking and the things that you felt, you know, weren't what everybody else was liking. Um, but you find out that those are those things that um, make you unique. So. Even now as an adult, I'd ask, and I've asked every single person this, on a scale of one to 10, how weird are you? Now I think maybe more weird. I think I was less weird in college. I think I was fairly weird in high school. Uh, and then in middle school, everyone was sort of weird, so it didn't so much matter. Um, but the the desire for math for me was that i knew that i could get an answer and i knew that i enjoyed the process and the challenges but those are the skills that literally help me today i take a completely subjective set of things that work for me and i have a system that i like that i'm never telling anyone about and I, once these things fit into that it's much easier to say oh this is gonna you know you can use your mind to evaluate companies and that that's a skill in itself but completely subjective things evaluating art or evaluating emotional people or figuring if someone's being a real person. These are just, but it was the math. It was the analysis of that stuff that I actually use today and being able to um, read people. Actors are very emotional people. They're, and, and I just try to find people that are just truthful. And when someone says, I want to be this, or I want to be that, I couldn't be less interested because I can smell on them when they're not. And there's the same, there's people that you guys know right now in school that you're, that, and they're people that you might think, wow, they have it all together. And they're, but they're telling you how they have it together. Those are specifically the people that do not have it together. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking to people, just like kind of just get a vibe and just see like, are they telling a little bit more about themselves than you have asked? Maybe that's because they think that they need to convince you of something. And maybe you're the one that knows what's up and you don't. So 
Uh, weird is cool. Weird is very in right now. Um, but, you know, put yourselves in a place where you can be seen and it doesn't have to be to get a volume of likes. It doesn't have to be to up your engagement total on Instagram or Twitter. I really think less is more. Find your people, hold on to those people. And um, it's okay to, you know, don't give your power away to people that don't deserve it. But when people start bringing you things or this one makes you feel that way, maybe write it down and think why. What's happening here? And if, that, if you feel like you're getting more from them than you're asking for, it's telling you a lot about them. And it harness that, and that's your power in making the choices that you want to make for yourself. Really, really good advice, Alex. Thank you. Very good advice. You're, you're a wise man. <laughs> um, so, John, I don't know if you have some things you want to share with them before we uh, come back really quickly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you again, Alex, for joining us. Uh, as I've just put in the chat box, you're, you, uh, you're taking us to church, uh, teaching us all these life skills. Uh, I think you've given a lot of great nuggets of, of just to what it is to be successful in life and just skills that we, we need to think about that we're not really teaching um, anywhere. And so uh, I'm glad to see uh, people are uh, in the in the in the chat are, are so pleasantly surprised from the session. And, well, I'll, and tell you, I'll do this. I, I've uh, there's people that I deal with today that spoke to me when I was um, uh, starting. And um, if anyone actually gets excited by this in some way, and you are near New York or Los Angeles in advance, uh, we will, I will figure out a way to get you an interview so that you can potentially be an intern where you too can work for free. <laughs> you too can deliver mail. And then there maybe, you go. But uh, uh, so if anyone- And, and be the future Alex Hiroch. We'll figure that out. Uh, but uh, yeah. there's a lot of mail that needs to be delivered. <clears throat> awesome, I, I do appreciate it though. And, and I think it's interesting. We have a math teacher in the chat as well. And, you know, he really is just uh, happy to see that, you know, kids really, when they're in math, a lot of times, if they don't like math, uh, why do I really need this? And and I think you really spelled it out pretty clearly how even using that analytical math mind, you were able to be successful at what you do now. So great, so great wisdom. Another person mentioned the, the literacy piece, which I think was yeah. amazing. Donna, great point that he's describing a kind of literacy in reading people. And that is a literacy, right? So, yeah. uh, in, in being able to uh, yeah. read and analyze people. For all you future poker players, I can play, the key to poker is just you're, you're betting not to tell someone that you have, but to see what they have. Mm. So um, that's the, the key is negative information, uh, that you get from people is very, very important. I would recommend for people to read Essentialism, which is a very adult book, but it talks about less. And uh, I think reading people and just figure out what's happening and, and then look at who's doing what and giving what info. And that info right now is very applicable uh, in, in many ways. And yeah. uh, I, I happen to be very keen on cognitive science. I thought I was, I, I liked the idea of of how the mind works and how people inter interrelate with each other. But you guys are very yeah. lucky with this Kalen here. Everybody oh, recognize quickly someone very, yeah. very special and very powerful. And um, this is a very cool thing that you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much, Alex. Um, and Donna, I just want to say to you, thank you so much for being so active in our chats and sharing, uh, you know, just sharing your thoughts with us as well. We, we have noticed you. We do appreciate you. Uh, throughout these past two weeks. So that I just appreciate your knowledge as well and wisdom. So thank you for that. Um, as we wrap up, again, as with each of our streams, we would love to hear what you think, because what we're gonna do is do a Flipgrid. And for those of you who are still new to Flipgrid, if this is your first time joining us, it's basically, basically like a, a TikTok for education where you do a quick selfie video. And what we want you to do is let us know what you thought about this session. Um, let us, you know, if you have a question for Alex, if you want to show something to Alex, whatever you want, um, you've got your 30 seconds. And then what we'll do is we'll create a mixtape and we will then share that link with him so he can see what your thoughts and feedback are. So again, you could take a picture of the QR code with your phone or you can, um, you can click the link in the chat box or visit the link later. Just remember that all the bit.ly's are case sensitive that we're gonna see here. For our teachers, 
Don't forget, we do have resources on our website. Um, the website is edtechtraining.pombeachschools.org, but this bit.ly will take you directly to our learning virtual learning experiences website. Again, as we talked about, um, this is the last day of our live streams for students right now. So uh, please keep in mind that all of the sessions that we've done, we've done, I believe, 20 of them these two over the two weeks, they are available for you to, uh, to watch and share with your students. So all the links that are there are still live. It'll just go to the replay instead of the live stream, obviously, because we're not live again. And again, for teachers, don't forget on June 9th and 10th, we are hosting a, a digital re remote digital learning institute with some of the biggest names in, uh, in ed tech across the country. It's going to be a similar thing like this, where each hour we're going to have a different presenter uh, and share their topic. So please register today. Uh, you can get up to 10 points per day, so 20 points total if you are in need of, of in-service points. But it's also just going to be a great uh, session to see some amazing speakers um, for everyone here. Uh, again, today, we talked about having a long day. In another half an hour, we're going to have another amazing person. Jenny Majera is going to join us. She works at Google. And she's going to share her journey from being a math teacher in Chicago all the way up through having her own nonprofit that focuses on equity and working at Google uh, as their global education in, uh, lead of impact. Sorry, she's got a, an interesting title. Um, and then at 2.30 to close out the full uh, live stream schedule, we're going to have a fashion and beauty panel where Kaylin is going to be moderating. Um, we're going to have a makeup artist, a creative director, and a stylist. And they're going to share what their careers are like in the fashion and beauty world and learn what it's like to work in those careers. So please join us again in a half an hour with Jenny and at 2.30 uh, for the fashion panel as we close up all of these live streams. Uh, we, we've had a great time doing this. We've heard so much great feedback from everyone. So we appreciate all of you guys. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Alex and Kaylin to, uh, to take us out. Uh, go ahead, take it away, guys. Alex, I will let you speak and then I'll uh, just, if you wanna say anything to them before you leave. Look, I think um, this job is, uh, what I do is I, I, I I get people work in many ways, uh, but I, I like I like to create uh, a place where people have choices, and that's sort of the main thing. I find uh, that I am uh, the advocate. I'm an advocate for more creative people that aren't necessarily the best advocates for themselves, and we, we're all not necessarily the best advocates for ourselves. And I, I, I if what I enjoy, uh, I enjoy connecting with people and. And taking care of people, and I also, uh, I also like, uh, I like to hustle, and I like to, um, I, I like to tell people about things that I like, and it, it's supremely satisfying to me. And um, nothing makes me happier when I get to sort of support, and and, and some of these people will, will grow into, you know, if you were to do this, they will be your friends, and they will be people that you will grow together in life. But. Um, it's uh, Hollywood and, and entertainment is very accessible and I had no connection of any kind out here. Um, but I just took a chance and I think if any of this is exciting to you, uh, let's figure out a way that you can um, try it. Thank you, Alex. I, I, I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you so much for being here and sharing your story and, um, and really what impact you're making in the world and I thank you for that. Bye, guys.